So you guys are going to be joining me on my raw trip. I'm heading down to Tongariro for the red stag raw. See how we go. Weather's looking good. Got a good weather window. I'm um, going to be staying or camping in there for two nights and see what we can find. I've got my pie. And fuel me on the way. And yeah, so I've got a four and a half hour drive to get to the road end. And then I have a two hour walk to get to campsite or where I'm going to camp. And then, um, yeah, we'll get up and see what sort of time we've got left in the afternoon for a bit of a walk around. Might be pushing it, but um, yeah, going to get on the road now very soon. The last time I was in this area was two years ago. I was hunting a slightly different catchment to the one I'm hunting now. Um, I shot that nice 10 pointer. So yeah, hoping to get something on the board. We'll just have to see how we go. Not too sure if the stags are fired up at the moment or not. It's the 5th of April, 2024. So we will soon find out guys. Stay tuned. We've got two nights in the bush which sort of gives us one full day of hunting which will be tomorrow and then we probably get a bit of hunting in on the Sunday as well so okay guys so just broken into the bush now so she's all on from here quickly just introduce myself if you are new to the chase and gather channel welcome my name's Michael uh, we do a whole bunch of chasing and gathering big big game hunting game bird hunting spear fishing fishing gathering seafood all that type of stuff do a lot of catch and cook sessions so yeah hopefully we can get some action on the on the camera for you and you can enjoy this trip with me got the walking poles on this trip guys um, if you follow our spearfishing missions and episodes I had a bit of a sore knee on one of those trips so bringing the poles in just to take some weight off the knees and, and the legs in general quite surprising actually the amount of energy you save from using the poles give you more stability and yeah save a lot of leg fatigue and last time I was coming out here well, a couple of catchments over I was carrying 60 kilos for two and a half hours so if we have a repeat of that situation, the poles will be very handy. And they're very light too. You can also use them for setting up a tent fly. Or propping up a tent. Very useful. If you're very crafty, you can also use them as a shooting stabiliser into a V formation, like so bind them together and you can use that as a shooting rest if you need an elevated position where you're shooting down onto something they can come in very handy just checking out some of these side creeks on the way through you never know what's lurking around Okay guys, it's in this creek bed here. Just drop the pack for a moment. And um, whenever I come across a stream, a clean stream, I'll make the um, 
make the habit of just having some water. That way you're obviously having to carry less water. I've got a litre in my bag there for if I get to camp and there's no water at camp, so I'm prepared for that, but if there's fresh water on the way, I might as well get into it. mountain there. Super clean, super fresh. I don't have to drink too much at once. And right, that's us. We're going to get back on the track, back up the hill. Okay guys, I've just got out into a nice open area here. So just above the bush line now. I've nailed most of the walk. Enough 20 minutes to go. Very calm up here tonight. Alright, guys, so a few minutes of bush bashing later, and we found a good spot for camp. This is when you're setting up your campsite or when you're thinking about location wise. Obviously having some overhead cover is nice. Protection from the elements, wind and rain. And then when possible, you want to be parked up next to a creek. Free flowing creek because you'd be surprised at how much water you actually use. Um, with your cooking, drinking, um, adding to all your meals, washing plates, that type of thing. So where possible. Put yourself next to a creek. Oh, I've got a nice area here. Beautiful. And as you can see guys, I've got here just before the sun has gone down. We're up in the beech forest here now. So that's our, our west, of course. And then other side, as the sun has come up. got some garlic cloves in there okay you want to keep the garlic clove clothing on for extra fiber bush fiber that goes on there I've also got you guys will have seen a few of my other hunting videos big fan of the San Remo these are very quick and easy to heat delicious so I normally have two of those Chicken and mushroom would probably be my favourite, guys, if you want the inside tip there. And then I've also brought some herb from the garden. So I've got some parsley here. I've also got some thyme. Bit of thyme to myself up here. And then I've also got some basil. So it's going to be a delicious feed, this, guys. The last of the sun, very, very last light now. Instead of lugging a pot lid around, just bring in a sheet of tin foil. And what you can do with that is you just chuck it over the top of your pan. Nice. 
so. And that's going to help your food cook a lot faster, which means that you save more gas. Well, that's us, guys. That is our meal. We've got the garnish on there now. Okay, guys, so quick mention on nav, navigation. I predominantly use the Topo 50 app on my phone, which I found to be very reliable, but I always have a backup GPS. Now, this one here is a very basic model. It's the Etrex 10. But what I will do when I get to my campsite, I'll make sure that I mark where it is because there has been some instances where I've gone to use the Topo 50 app and the direction of the vector is pointing the wrong way to where I'm meant to be going. So if that's the case, I've got this option as well to navigate my way back to camp. I just use a compass against this and that is a very good backup plan. So I keep that with me in my bum bag. So my main source of nav is the Topo 50 as an app. Very, very useful, very good, very accurate. Uh, I think it's about $12 to buy. So you can buy a North Island and a South Island version. It's obviously got all the tracks on there and the marked huts. You can mark waypoints. You can do all sorts of things, record your track as you go. So the other thing that could also happen, if you're relying on your phone and your phone battery dies, you don't have a power bank or there's a connection issue with your power bank, you can't recharge it, you're going to get stuck in the middle of nowhere, likely. And so this here is plan B. So regardless of if my phone is working or not, I can still get back to my base camp using this runs on two double a batteries but that comes with me everywhere good morning team well it has just gone 5 30 and um yeah it got quite cool overnight got down to about five degrees so fresh very clear sky Heaps of stars out. Beautiful, beautiful evening. I just literally heard a stag across the gully from me. Just did two roars. And it's been quiet for three or four minutes now, so that's good. Um, yeah, it's meant to be pretty nice today. I did hear a couple of other stags firing down the gully there, or a lot further down, maybe two kilometres or so. Um, that was about 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning, so there's obviously some vocal activity up here, which is good. Hopefully they keep going throughout the day. plan of attack is to isolate where that roar is coming from and then work my way in and I'll get in as close as I can to it. I'll try and sneak in on the stag rather than um, trying to roar it to me. Alright team, it's go time now. I'm just going to start to leave camp. I uh, found some freshwater crayfish this morning when I was actually filling up my bottle grab me some water so there was about three or four of them down there 
freshwater crayfish or coda. A uh, quick gear check before I get out of here because I'm going to be away for the whole day. Obviously I've got my rifle, bolt, magazine. I use a suppressor on mine. Obviously got some ammo. Got three rounds in here. And then I've got another four rounds in my bum bag. And then three rounds in my bino harness. So I'm not going to run out of ammo. Bino harness in here, guys, are my binos. So I have the Swarovski 10x42 HD. I've also inside here got some spare rounds and my cloth wipe for the lenses or for the scope lens. So that's my pouch. I also put my phone inside there as well. So that goes in there. Um, over here I've got a power bank. So this is 6,000 MAH so I'll get one full charge of my phone off that I've got my charging cables for my phone and for my headlamp which I've got on my head guys I've got a spare GoPro battery which is fully charged I've got my Etrex 10 remember I've put my coordinates in for base camp and I've also got a spare phone in there as well so that has NZ Popo 50 app on it. So those electronics I keep in a sealed bag. Across to here guys is my first aid kit. So yeah, pretty much a standard first aid kit. Got your key things like your tape, um, needles, electrolyte solution, um, wrapping got bandages here big bandage accident blanket also got my flint if I need to light a fire or whatever get that going so that all just goes on my waist belt and then in here guys okay, this is my raw horn good volume out of that beast this is a pillow case so I'll use this for um, carrying deer meat venison whatever um, I've got a tripod for my GoPro this is my water bottle so 600 mils be free now this on here is an important feature flip the lid off inside there guys is a filter so this catadin filter you can essentially fill up your drink bottle and then drink straight through that filter takes all the nasty stuff out so that's a perfect size for my bum bag so i can just fill up at any creek drink straight out of the creek i also have one of these in two liter and four liter the four liter one i use for my uh, water at camp knife sharpener got fine and medium I've got some snack bars guys one two three channel three at CF through the day I've got my compass as well I've got a lighter I've got my spear knife always carry a spear knife guys I've got cord as well I've got my extra rounds inside there and that is pretty much it another bar so on top of that I've got my PLB and then my knife so that's the capsule the first aid kit the PLB and the knife are all on that one circuit there and then this stuff here goes into my bum bag. So that's essentially all we're taking today. I'm 
I'm wearing a blaze blue top. I've got a beanie on. I've got my lead lenser headlamp on. I'll be taking that as well. I've got my GoPro. Um, I've got a warm jersey and then I've got a breathable jersey as well. Uh, and then I've got a breathable, I've also got a breathable t-shirt. So that is us. Okay crew, so I've just gained some elevation. I've been walking for about 30 or 40 minutes now and try and jump across onto a ridge line that I'm going to stalk down I think while there is potential for a, a, a nice wallow to be there. It's just on the it's on the bottom of a ridge or a, a finger. Yeah, so let's um cut our way through. It's pretty fresh. having my breakfast snack log had some water get the hydration going extremely quiet here I haven't heard a single roar all morning time is nine o'clock so, mm, I'm just making my way towards where I think a wallow may be. That's about 500 meters from here. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I haven't let out any roars yet because I'm trying to have the stealth approach down this ridge. If I don't hear anything, then I'll start to turn up the volume. Okay guys, so you'll see that I'm in the blue blaze today. Um, I lent out my orange blaze ghillie and cap to someone and it hasn't returned. So just a quick note on the colours. So just to point that out. Um, the orange blaze is not as easily picked up in a deer's vision. So comparing the two, the orange blaze versus the blue blaze, the deer is less likely to see that orange blaze. They have a bit of a difficulty determining oranges from reds and that type of brown grey shade, whereas blue actually stands out quite a bit more. They can pick it up with their visual acuity. So just something to keep in mind. Well, that's all very fresh. No noise makers.
it is one big old tree check out these mate that is something else another one here all right guys so i'm back out of that bush now i'm just come back into some open open broken country here just having a bit of a feed and getting a bit of a uh, a drying session on everything's quite wet from the bush um, change of tactics so there's change of wind now it's uh, westerly so I'm going to head down and then I'm going to hunt into the wind just as I was coming out of this bush edge here I saw the ass of a hind bolt straight through it went straight through there so I came out here and it went straight through there so I don't know it must have been in here somewhere those wallows where I went today that was roughly where I could hear that stag this morning about 5 a.m and then the other stags that I could hear earlier in the early morning was sort of further south which is sort of where I'm heading across to now made my way into the bush quietly and it roared a couple more times and I was probably maybe 50 or 60 meters from it well that's what it sort of sounded like anyway and um, and then it's just vanished it's gone I didn't even hear it disappear or run off or anything and it, yeah it hasn't made any noise for 15 or 20 minutes so unfortunately the one that got away it's about 3.30 in the afternoon now the wind has picked up let's probably wait here for another 5 minutes and then I'm going to head, head off and um, get into a better position with the wind I don't know, the wind is a bit all over the place when you're up here maybe it got a bit of my scent and disappeared not sure. Anyway, it was good to good to hear something actually. No. 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 Have a quick uh quick cuppa pack down the tent and then I'm gonna walk back down the track drop the pack and then I'm going to hunt on the on the lower uh, terraces or the lower area down near the base of the mountain and we'll see what we can pick up down there haven't heard any roars this morning at all so still pretty quiet on that front yeah that's the plan of attack for today Right team, well we're packed and ready to go, camp is clean, nothing left here, so now we're back on the track, probably going to walk about an hour down the track and then just shoot straight off into the bush and just do some bush stalking for the next few hours, see what we see, uh, I think it's amazing to have what we have in New Zealand here, very grateful and can very easily take things like this for granted, so yeah it's a whole the whole well-being piece around hunting, uh, I don't think it's 
completely understood by a lot of people yet. If you are a hunter, you will know, but many people uh, who haven't been into the outdoor setting like this, where you've got the beautiful streams, the mountains, the birds, the fresh air, the physical activity, um, it's just all here. So, And then sometimes you get to bring home some venison or some wild game to share with the family. Not a bad treat for the morning, guys. Absolutely beautiful. So this stag that I'm chasing, it's only roaring every half hour or so, moaning, roaring. Um, so what I'm doing with my GPS, my topo maps, every time I hear it, I'll put a marker on the GPS and approximately how far I think it is. And so I'm tracking towards that marker rather than just sort of going willy-nilly through the bush at different directions because in here I'm in a nice spot at the moment but it's pretty thick and so you want to I'm actually just waiting at the moment I'm waiting here for about three or four minutes have a bit of a breather listen out for the stag sometimes when you're pushing through the bush because it can be quite loud you might actually miss hearing the stags and then yeah break up your bush bashing as well because it does get a bit tiresome so just keeping a listen out now for the stag the wind is coming this way so that's all good but yeah um i don't know it's it's likely going to be in some thick bush where the stag is sun's up it's 10am now, so. Well, here is another wallow that I've just come across. There's quite a few sort of game trails leading from this one. Got fresh marks through there. Once again, eh, there is just, there's so much buzzing going around it's a it's a combination I've actually been observing it it's a combination of wasps bees and the blowflies when you're standing still all you hear is just this buzz in the canopy and then you get the blowflies come and visit you and it actually makes it hard to listen for the stags there's that much noise going on. These guys. Hey, I'm gradually making ground on the stag, but it's not roaring very often. I've come about a kilometre off the track now. So I'm basically just making a beeline towards. Well, I've heard that. Maybe 400 metres.
I've been following the stag now for about three quarters of an hour. Get closer, get closer. It moves further and further away every time. So now, this bush bashing, getting through these creeks. So what I'm trying to do here guys when I can, when the stag is roaring, I'm trying to move briskly through the bush. So I'm trying to cover my sound, that a sound that I'm making, pushing through the bush while the stag is roaring. So I'll do some short bursts of speed and then I'll try and slow right down. Uh, gaining on the stag here, but yeah, it was a bit of a chess game for a while. within I would have got to within 20 meters of it it was that loud hopefully there's some footage on the GoPro there um, and coming 
through the trees there, I could just see this light brown. And I was just bringing my scope across onto it, and I, I could only see a fraction of it. So I couldn't identify everything there. <laughs> so, erred on the side of caution, and within a split second of me seeing it in the scope, it was just gone. Big stag, bolted straight through these trees here. Took an exit out that way. And um, yeah, after that, I just sat here for a few minutes and uh, the stag was somewhere in the distance. I gave it a couple of hind calls. Meh, 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 that type of thing. And it circled back around, but just out of sight. I could hear the sticks breaking, 40 or 50 meters, sort of doing a perimeter of me. And then it's just disappeared, so. Ah, gutted. In the raw, everyone is trying to imitate a stag. So I could have been sneaking in on a person who was doing those raw calls off a device, or they might have been doing it through a roaring horn or whatever. I wouldn't actually know until I got there and identified is it a person or is it a deer and in this situation I couldn't identify enough features on that piece of brown deer skin between two trees to 100% know that it was a deer um, I was pretty confident that it was a deer I'd been following a moving sound for about an hour and a half but I didn't know 100% so I did not pull the trigger anyway got to um, get my decoy back on gonna head it back to the track and pick up the bag Okay team, well this is our commuting setup, or the setup that I use. Um, Tatonka, this is 65 plus 10, so 65 litres plus 10. Uh, bison, and then with my rifle, I've got that put into the pocket down below. I've got the suppressor in there as well. I also have the trekking sticks. These are extremely good if you want to save some weight on the hips, the knees, the ankles, and the back. They help to distribute a lot of the weight, and they also give your legs a little bit of respite. On the other side, I've got my tent. So, rifle, tent, most of the stuff's in the middle. Unfortunately, we don't have a big stag on this trip. Last time I was coming out of a catchment just further down, I have a big 10 pointer on there, but not this time. Righto guys, it is go time. Time to get on down the track. When you're setting up your pack, you want to put most of the weight transferred through your hips. So you adjust your, your hip straps first. And then you want to adjust your shoulder straps after that. You want to take most of the load through the hips. And then you've got your securing chest strap just to tighten everything up. So from there we should be good to go. I commute with my um, chest rig as well. Keeps everything out the front. Keep my phone in there. And then also attach my GoPro onto the side here so that's us the hunting part of the mission is done hope you guys enjoyed that adventure just as much as i did of course it was a solo mission this time camping for two nights day and a half of hunting came across a couple of stags which was really nice the last encounter there was really exciting 
super close to um, putting one on the deck but as you guys can see in there a couple of messages around safety particularly at this time of the year and just yeah making sure you identify your target and make sure you are as visible as possible in the bush with some blaze and that type of thing drop us a comment below let us know how you thought the mission went let us know any comments if you have hunted Tongarero National Park before let us know how you guys get on how you find it and um, yeah if you guys got into any deer this year for the raw drop us a comment below let us know how you got on Thank mm -hmm. you.